You might have been told that if you want to sum or count by cell color in Excel, you need to either do it manually using filters or you need to create your own Visual Basic function. But do you? It turns out if we rewind the clock all the way back to 1992, Excel 4 had its own macro function language and we can use that today in modern Excel so you can sum or count by the cell colour. The Excel 4 function we're going to be using today to do this summing by colour is get.cell. Now I've collated a load of information and the links to this are on the description or you can just download this spreadsheet with um, the main link that's completely free, it instantly downloads to your PC and you can work along. Now, the original post was by Mr. Excel, which is where I got that from. What we need is function number 63 of within this function, and that is the fill color. But just to note, there are plenty of other numbers. I scroll down through here, you can see there's there's literally <laughs> dozens and dozens of them. But some of the more useful ones are font color, font size, the actual font name. So you could sum or count by any of these using this exact same method that I'm going to show you now. Now, if we have this product data here, I've kept it nice and small for illustration purposes, but obviously you can use this on any amount of data. Unfortunately, we can't just type these formulas straight into Excel, as I'll demonstrate. So if we put get.cell63 and the cell reference and hit enter, we get a message saying that function isn't valid. And that's because, as I mentioned earlier, this stuff was discontinued with Excel 5 in 1993. But how do we get around this? Believe it or not, these formulas are still accepted within named ranges. So if I click on named range and new named range, and I'm going to give it a name, uh, fill color to left, because this this name range will pick up the fill color from the cell directly to the left of where you are. And the way I'm going to do that is in the refers to, I put in a get.cell63, comma, and I'm going to click wherever I am right now when I hit the new name box, I'll click one cell to the left of it. And then I need to remove uh, the dollar signs and the sheet name to make it a relative cell reference. Close the brackets and click OK. So we now have our named range called fill color to left. I'll close that. So if I type in fill, and as soon as I type in FIL, I'll get my option fill color to left, click tab to select it, enter, we get 35. If I copy and paste that down the entire column, there you go, mixture of 35, 38 and zero. Isn't that great? Right, what are we gonna do with that? Well, first off, we can use a sum if. So, as long as we've got the same color to the left here, we can put sum if our range that we're checking for our criteria will be this. I'll just fix that with F4. Our criteria is, um, Fill color to left. Hold on. Fill color to left. And our sum range is this here. Again, fix it with F4, close the bracket, hit enter, copy that formula down. There we go. Isn't that great? So that's how you sum by color. How do you count by color? Right, I just put that as sum. Copy these over here and call it count. Very easy indeed. We're just gonna do a count if on this column here, which is the results of our fill color to the left. So, equals count if. Our range is this. Make sure we fix that with F4. And our criteria is it needs to be the same as the fill color to the left of the formula we are entering right now. Bill color to left. There we go, six of them, six of them, five of them. Okay, so that's all great, yeah? 
Well, hold on. What if I decide I'm going to change this number to yellow? As you can see, none of the formulas have updated. And that's not what we want to see, is it? So why is that? Well, first of all, it's because we're looking at macros, not standard Excel functions. So they need to run as macros. But we can get around this by forcing the macro to join with an existing Excel function. And so the way we can do that quickly is if we go to the formulas and our named range formula, if we just edit that to put on today's date and time times by zero, that will force a recalculation of this function every time Excel recalculates the spreadsheet. So if we close on that and hit yes, you can see it's recalculated now, but also if I just change it back, so I'll change it back to green, it won't calculate until I go into any cell anywhere and hit enter. That will force the cell recalculation for the whole spreadsheet and off you go. And of course, if you're in manual calculation, you'd have to push F9 to do that. So that is the workaround. One more caveat to this technique that you do need to watch for, and I don't know the workaround, it will not pick up any conditional formatting that you've put on top. If you conditionally format something to come up with green if it's a, a good result and red if it's not, if the underlying cell colour was white before that was marked up, it will not pick up that green or red cell. So just be careful if you're using conditional formatting. Now one bonus that I'll just give you now is that you can use these macro functions in worksheets as well. And the way you do this is you right click on the bottom sheet and you do insert Excel for macro. Click OK. All right. And you can also do Control F11 to do that too. Now, this will give you a sheet that looks like slightly wider columns and is labeled macro one, two, whatever. But you can use this as a normal sheet. If I go back here, if I paint, copy and paste all of this information into here, paste it, looks a bit odd, but if it's because it's showing uh, it's in formula mode, I press control and the key above tab, I think it's called tilde. That turns it back into a normal output sheet just widen that column and now look at this I can type straight away into the sheet these functions no need for name ranges the only problem is when I copy it down it doesn't look like it's updated what I have to do because it's a macro I have to run the macro so okay developer macros run and off we go. So that is a way of getting the exact same result without needing to use named ranges. Now there's absolutely tons more features that you can use with just this one macro get.cell but there's hundreds of other macros available in Excel 4 all of which I believe you can access through the named ranges or through these macro sheets. So it's a whole new hidden area of Excel to open up and explore. So make sure you comment below if you've got your own particular favorites or you find something you think's great that you might wanna let me know about and I can make a video on it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let's hope you find it useful. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you soon.